Hello my friends, today we're going to continue the reading of Diary of a Wimpy Kid by Jeff Kinney, and this is going to be our part two, moving from page 20 to 21. Monday. You know how I said I play all sorts of pranks on Rowley? Well, I have a little brother named Manny, and I could never get away with pulling any of that stuff on him. Mom and Dad protect Manny like he's a prince or something, and he never gets in trouble, even if he really deserves it. Yesterday, Manny drew a self-portrait on my bedroom door in permanent marker. I thought Mom and Dad were really going to let him have it, but as usual, I was wrong. But the thing that bugs me the most about Manny is the nickname he has for me. When he was a baby, he couldn't pronounce brother, so he started calling me Bubby. And he still calls me that now, even though I keep trying to get Mom and Dad to make him stop. Luckily, none of my friends have found out yet, but believe me, I have had some really close calls. Hey, this one says it's to Bubby. Must be a mistake. Mom makes me help Manny get ready for school in the morning. After I make Manny his breakfast, he carries his cereal bowl into the family room and sits on his plastic potty. C is for cookie, and cookie is for me. Huh? And when it's time for him to go to daycare, he gets up and dumps whatever he didn't eat right in the toilet. Mom is always getting on me about not finishing my breakfast, but if she had to scrape cornflakes out of the bottom of a plastic potty every morning, she wouldn't have much of an appetite either. Tuesday. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I am super good at video games. I'll bet I could beat anyone in my grade head to head. Unfortunately, Dad does not exactly appreciate my skills. He's always getting on me about going out and doing something active. So tonight after dinner, when Dad started hassling me about going outside, I tried to explain how with video games you can play sports like football and soccer, and you don't even have to get all hot and sweaty. But, as usual, Dad didn't see my logic. Dad is a pretty smart guy in general, but when it comes to common sense, sometimes I wonder about him. Slam. I'm sure Dad would dismantle my game system if he could figure out how to do it, but luckily the people who make these things make them parent-proof. Dag nab these fancy gadgets. Every time Dad kicks me out of the house to do something sporty, I just go up to Rowley's and play my video games there. Unfortunately, the only games I could play at Rowley's are car racing games and stuff like that. Because whenever I bring a game up to Rowley's house, his dad looks it up on some parent's website. And if my game has any kind of fighting or violence in it, he won't let us play. Hmm. I'm getting a little sick of playing Formula 1 racing with Rowley, because he's not a serious gamer like me. All that you have to do to beat Rowley is name your car something ridiculous at the beginning of the game. And then when you pass Rowley's car, he just falls to pieces. Bad fought ahead. <laughs> anyway, after I got done mopping the floor with Rowley today, I headed home. I ran through the neighbor's sprinkler a couple times to make it look like I was all sweaty, and that seemed to do the trick for Dad. Phew! But my trick kind of backfired because as soon as Mom saw me, she made me go upstairs and take a shower. Wednesday. I guess Dad must have been pretty happy with himself for making me go outside yesterday, because he did it again today. It's getting really annoying to have to go up to Rowley's every time I want to play a video game. There's this weird kid named Fregley who lives halfway between my house and Rowley's, and Fregley's always hanging out in his front yard, so it's pretty hard to avoid him. Wanna see my secret freckle? Um, no thanks. Fregley is in my phys ed class at school, and he has the whole made up language. Like, when he needs to go to the bathroom, he says, Juice! Juice! Us kids have pretty much figured Fregley out by now, but I don't think the teachers have really caught on yet. Okay, kid, gee whiz. Today, I probably would have gone up to Rowley's on my own anyway, because my brother Roderick and his band were practicing down in the basement. Roderick's band is really awful, and I can't stand being at home when they're having rehearsals. His band is called Loaded Diaper, only it's spelled loaded diaper on Roderick's van. You might think he spelled it that way to make it look cooler, but I bet if you told Roderick how loaded diaper is really spelled, it would be news to him. Dad was against the idea of Roderick starting a band, but Mom was all for it. She's the one who bought Roderick his first drum set. I think Mom has this idea that we're all going to learn to play instruments and then become one of those family bands like you see on TV. Dad really hates heavy metal, and that's the kind of music Roderick and his band play. I don't think Mom really cares what Roderick plays or listens to, because to her, all music is the same. In fact, earlier today, Roderick was listening to one of his CDs in the family room, and Mom came in and started dancing. That really bugged Roderick, so he drove off to the store and came back 15 minutes later with some headphones, and that pretty much took care of the problem. Thursday. Yesterday, Roderick got a new heavy metal CD, 
and it had one of those parental warning stickers on it. I have never gotten to listen to one of those parental warning CDs because mom and dad never let me buy them at the mall. So I realized the only way I was going to get a chance to listen to Roderick's CD was if I snuck it out of the house. This morning, after Roderick left, I called up Rowley and told him to bring his CD player to school. Then I went down to Roderick's room and took the CD off his rack. You're not allowed to bring personal music players to school, so we had to wait to use it until after lunch when the teachers let us outside. As soon as we got the chance, me and Rowley snuck around the back of the school and loaded up Roderick's CD. But Rowley forgot to put batteries in his CD player, so it was pretty much worthless. Then I came up with this great idea for a game. The object was to put the headphones on your head and then try to shake them off without using your hands. The winner was whoever could shake the headphones off in the shortest amount of time. I had the record with seven and a half seconds, but I think I might have shook some of my fillings loose with that one. Right in the middle of our game, Mrs. Craig came around the corner and caught us red-handed. She took the music player away from me and started chewing us out. But I think she had the wrong idea about what we were doing back there. She started telling us how rock and roll is evil and how it's going to ruin our brains. I was going to tell her that there weren't even any batteries in the CD player, but I could just tell she didn't want to be interrupted. So I just waited until she was done and then I said yes ma'am. But right when Mrs. Craig was about to let us go, Rowley started blubbering about how he doesn't want rock and roll to ruin his brains. Honestly, sometimes I don't know about that boy. Friday. Well, now I've gone and done it. Last night after everyone was in bed, I snuck downstairs to listen to Roderick's CD on the stereo in the family room. I put Roderick's new headphones on and cranked up the volume really high. Then I hit play. First, let me just say I can definitely understand why they put that parental warning sticker on the CD, but I only got to hear about 30 seconds of the first song before I got interrupted. It turns out I didn't have the headphones plugged into the stereo, so the music was actually coming through the speakers, not the headphones. Dad marched me up to my room and shut the door behind him, and then he said, Let's you and me have a talk, friend. Whenever Dad says friend that way, you know you're in trouble. The first time Dad ever said friend like that to me, I didn't get that he was being sarcastic, so I kind of let my guard down. Friend equals good. I don't make that mistake anymore. Tonight, Dad yelled at me for about 10 minutes, and then I guess he decided he'd rather be in bed than standing in my room in his underwear. He told me I was grounded from playing video games for two weeks, which is about what I expected. I guess I should be glad that's all he did. The good thing about Dad is that when he gets mad, he cools off real quick, and then it's over. Usually, if you mess up in front of Dad, he just throws whatever he's got in his hands at you. Good time to screw up. Kick. Bad time to screw up. Kick. Mom has a totally different style when it comes to punishment. If you mess up and mom catches you, the first thing she does is to take a few days to figure out what your punishment should be. And while you're waiting, you do all these nice things to try and get off easier. I just dusted the dining room for the heck of it. How thoughtful of you. But then after a few days, right when you forget you're in trouble, that's when she lays it on you. Are you having fun? Yeah. No video games for a week. And that's where we're stopping for now on page 40. Tomorrow we continue with page 41. Tune in so you can hear more of the story. Goodbye.